So it's not good morning, it's midday. Usually I say good morning from Olympia, Washington, but I'm here at noontime, midday in Queens, New York. And this is Brooklyn, New York. And I'm really noticing um, as I drove from Olympia, Washington, down to San Francisco, over to Colorado, and then I have to do this in order. I'm going to just flunk my geography test. Let's see. Oklahoma City. No. Texas. Arkansas. Richmond, Virginia. Up to New York. So what did I notice? I noticed that I tend to kind of just expand and breathe into the community. I pull off the freeway. I try to find a historical district, but sometimes I'll just find a neighborhood with a strip mall with maybe a farmer's market where in Oklahoma City, they're selling pickled everything, pickled eggs and couples. He prepares it and she pickles it and the daughter helps. So what I'm saying is I'm going into these environments and I'm stepping into what? Into other regional consciousnesses, which are thick, very thick. In Oklahoma, graciousness, a simplicity, but there is a thickness of this is how we do things, this is how we think. And so I'm very careful as a visitor to fit in. And I found myself even leaning into what might they wear? what would their posture be? And so my tendency is to not stand out, but to meet people right where they're at with respect for the courageous battle that each of us are leading. And in these communities, there's all different sizes of bank accounts and you can feel it. I could feel that Jesus mission there taking up practically a whole half a block, stuffing in Fruit Loops and Cheerios, whatever they could get for the starving people in their community. I feel here in Queens, I mean, you can feel that there's a certain element of uh, tightness of place to live, of having to share, have multi-generational families, and all of this becomes part of what? the vibrational milieu, the vibrational soup that you walk into. And if you haven't prepared yourself energetically, your own vibrational field, especially if you're a projector, that's human design, you just start like this, and you can even lose yourself a little bit and become part of that <laughs> shared consciousness field which is different, which every field that you go into, you suddenly feel like, well, wait a minute, I have more education in here, I have more money in here. And you start feeling all the different parts of yourself that you hold so dear as part of your construct, your personality, this is how I do things. And then of course, if you have way much more money, you feel guilty, if you have way much more health or privilege you might feel guilty, or you might look down on people. So part of this tour has been helping me understand, I must hold myself and yourself too, traveling, going to visit relatives, even going to the doctors. If we are light workers, we are so full of empathy, to want to be nice, make things easy sometimes, we lose ourselves. Now, you don't want to put a big glass veneer there so that we're a solid container and no one can ever get in, knock, knock. That also can happen hardening in the New York, especially so intense the number of people and they've done human studies on densities of environments and people tend to contract to contain and control what they can, their own consciousness, okay? So today we're going to talk about always remembering to 
hold our light, hold our own consciousness, so that when we come into environment, we're not bowled over, we're not bleeding out, we're not embodying what it is, but we're holding our own from what? A place of non-attachment, neutrality, and shedding love and compassion for the journey that everyone is on on this planet. And it's also important because sensorily we are bombarded at least three times a day, there's a car coming by that's so loud that their music comes in louder than I would have any radio on. And my grandson rearranges the furniture. The mattress was upside down and in the front room. Yes, and I'm like, this kid is, is Spider-Man. He can jump off the ceiling. He can jump like this. And so I'm constantly thinking, is that safe? Rollerblading, blah, 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 blah. Talking, eating, throwing his food, plates like a frisbee across the kitchen. And so I am having to practice what I preach and teach all the time. Stay calm, stay centered, non-reactive. And then when I have the triggers, I see what they are. Of course, there's normal self-protection. So... We don't want to be panicked and anxious going out in a new environment, for instance, for safety. We simply keep our purse over our shoulders, keep it close and zipped up. I have a very fancy ring here and I often will turn it around. No need to dazzle people with this. In fact, it looks fake. It's so, so big. My car, first night, they broke into the store. 10 feet from my car where I was parked, but now the car's parked right in front. So we do what we can and then we just let it go because life will always have a multitude of, I don't want to call them assaults, but changes in the vibrational field. So if we want to be coherent light workers to talk to people, that's the other part. Um, I talked to people. I went into that Jesus mission and and appreciated what they're doing for humans. And pretty soon I went out and he showed me all the signage and he's praying for my trip with me from his heart. This is a man who owns two pizza businesses and still has time to devote and create a mission with all these microphones and broadcasts and preparing food. Then yesterday or was the day before here in Queens, there's two women that moved from Catholicism into Jehovah's Witness. And we had a very deep, long conversation about what is spirituality, what is religion. So I am learning as I go. Okay, before we drop in, this is the best story. So we dropped my son off at Waldorf School, a beautiful school of privilege in in new york and it is it is a beautiful educational system it's a blessing and a privilege so i came out and i had four hours well i first went over i had coffee in the only nice coffee shop the only nice coffee shop i mean i'm even showing my privilege as i speak because here in queens when i say where's the coffee shop they say mcdonald's is the only place on the whole strip to have a hot coffee, McDonald's. Okay, McDonald's. I have coffee there quite a few times while I'm visiting. But yesterday, I had four hours. So I went on this very busy street and I realized I wasn't warm enough. And so just as it always happens, I trip over an opportunity. Jesus saves, are you ready? And there I open these doors, a huge building, it's warm. I go inside of myself. It's a gospel rescue mission, I guess. But the good news is they had all these seats and all these people were there. And there's a big screen about how to save yourself through Jesus and the scriptures. And I said to myself, you know, I'm a minister. I can learn something. This fellow on the screen was ministering to these people. In fact, he even had a bottle of water and was praying into it. And I noticed 
one person, he says, now drink the water of salvation. Someone got their water out and they were drinking it. So I sat there and I absorbed wisdom, uh, information, uh, neighborhood, local, geographic, languaging, and there's an expansion. So uh, then I went out and I also uh, did different things and I shopped at many ethnic markets. I got very wonderful herbal toothpaste and body things. And then I got a pedicure because that's what I love to do. So it was fabulous. It was a very mixed thing by sweetheart. And um, when it was all over, I realized we have to keep the doors open when we go somewhere new and say, no, I can't do that. We allow ourselves to stay open, but we must hold our own vibration. So that's what we're going to approach today. And then we're, the second part is uh, the protection that we set in the morning and before we go to sleep. That is the time when you reassemble the vibration. And just like we floss our teeth, it's spiritual hygiene to release any lingering thoughts, energies, embarrassments, shames, or whatever it is, and let it go so it doesn't fester and cause a little barnacle that attracts more of the same. Okay, so this is our trajectory for today. Take a deep breath through the nose and out through the mouth. We ask and intend to set a sacred space. And let's start with this appreciation, appreciation that you have the time to show up and to spend this time to polish your toolkit for your vibrational field. That in itself is a luxury. So you're in a place of honoring your spiritual path and appreciation opens the heart. Take your attention to your heart, deep breath through the nose and out through the mouth. So as we are asking and intending to set this sacred space, we are imagining that we are putting ourselves in a beautiful geometric structure. Feel its stability, its safety, coherency to separate your consciousness from everything else. Just let that settle in for a moment. Now we ask and intend to remove everyone else's energy from our field, their thoughts, agendas, issues. And now we remove even our own thoughts, knowing that we will feel safe and grounded. Let your breath out and drop down into this physical body, the carrier of your consciousness. It's very precious. Just let that settle in. Beautiful. So now we call in our spirit guides, the beings of divine light. And we're going to go through a little spiritual, I guess, washing machine. It's imagine angels, divine beings, shh, windshield wipers for the third eye chakra, <laughs> a little brush on top, all those little bubbly things going over your physical body. Just imagine that you are at the divine car wash. I, I mean, really, it's, it's a great, great thing. But it's doing a deep clean. It's not just going externally, superficially. But the detergent is angelic, penetrating essence that is going now into your tissues, your body, your physical body. But more importantly, when we do this cleansing, our emotional body is being freshened up, balanced, and recreated. 
into more harmonious, reflective modality. The cleaner you get, the more light you can reflect. Think of a prism, kind of sitting around, going on those subways in and out, the soot, people's energy fields. Let your emotional field be purified and washed and cleansed and buffed dry, nice and shiny, pure, clean and clear. Imagine that you are millions because you are little crystalline prisms. All parts of your makeup are geometric in structure. So your body is a million vibrating, beautiful dancing crystals. And down to the cellular matrix, all of the chemicals that are not life enhancing are being dismissed and washed away. And there's a beautiful melody that the angels are singing as this is occurring. Truly, it's a, it's a divine bath, a heavenly, heavenly soak and sauna. Deeply, deeply physical, beautifully cleansing in the emotional realm. And now let's let one drop of super in detergent go right into our thoughts where our mental thoughts originate. We ask and intend that our thoughts be originated in the present of a calm, stable, resourced mind. We ask that the fear-laced past be the past and released. We ask that in this moment, that's a celebratory releasing fear bell ringing right there. Whenever the something rings after I've just said it, it's saying, yes, flags are waving because we're closer to the finish line when we release fear. So just feel that, that you have chosen as a human being to leave fear behind. And this divine car wash is absolutely what the doctor ordered today. So just we're just going to spend a moment here to wash away and scrub effervescent bubbles like hydrogen peroxide. It just eats away anything that doesn't belong there. But whatever image, you know that toothbrush, it scrubs between the tiles. Let's scrub between those brain synapses that get excited over old occurrences that are no longer present. It's clear and clean, cleanly separate ourselves from the past. In this moment, we are purified, cleansed, It'll go a little further. We ask that any wear and tear or deterioration or disease states be reorganized in our system to absolute sparkling health. Refurbish, regenerate, recalibrate because everything is vibration and we can. That's it. We're bringing in the higher energy, a very, very high vibration energy. It's like the hand of God coming in and recalibrating your system to pure health. And why can why are we able to do this? Because we can. When we're asking and intending 
and holding a high vibration because we can. Beautiful. Let this healing hand of a divine nature come in and hold and remove and gently pull out of your system any dysfunctioning patterns or energies or lingering thoughts or traumas now. Excellent. Okay. So how often do you think uh, we should do this tuna? How often have you been doing this for yourself? Again, it's a pretty good pretty good image of how often do you flush your teeth and keep that tartar from building up? How often do you take your car in? Oh, on a schedule. What is your spiritual hygiene schedule? So that when you are walking into new environments, you are not already detuned and start embodying and vibrating with something that is not natural for you. And it takes you out of your seat, your center of confidence and life and your ability to dispense blessings just by your presence. So let's make an affirmation together. We ask and intend that we won't wait to get detuned and have an issue. That we will, upon waking every morning, spend 15 precious minutes to balance and retune ourselves. And when we are ready to retire in that last hour before sleep, we empty out, refine, and redesign our vibrational system to its highest functioning so we may rest and sleep and retune ourselves to be energized and full of action of our choosing the next morning a joyful meeting of the resonance and the appreciation of a new day yet to bring more light to the world. So take a deep breath through your nose and out through your mouth. And now the last thing we'll talk about in this meditation is today. So you've retuned, you've done your hygiene, and then in the middle of the day, something really off balance happens. Someone knocks into you, you drop all your groceries, somebody says something mean, family member. How do you protect yourself from the morning and evening reestablishing your core vibrational field? Is that you protect yourself? And it's very simple. And we do at the end of every one of our meditations. And this is what it looks like. We just ask and intend to put a beautiful, golden, resilient egg around our entire field, okay? We float through life. It's like we're in it, but not of it. We can contribute to it, we can receive, but we are in charge of what we give and what we receive. Things don't just seep in and then suddenly we have a vibration that we don't wish to carry. So it's semi-permeable, but it's also flexible so things bounce off. So let's spend a moment right now imagining your beautiful golden resilient egg, semi-permeable membrane, and what that means to you throughout the day so that something comes that could really take you off your center bounces off and you say oh i remember when i used to get so jangled with that or i would react and then you feel good and then that adds to your vibrational field self-appreciation for emotional regulation 
So this will help. The three steps. Wake up in the morning. Reset. Set that beautiful golden resilient egg. Carry you through your day. And then before you go to sleep, if there was any little mishaps, and I always think, well, when I was counseling my grandson on giving the ball to the other kids during playtime, even though he is faster and taller, that it's no fun to play a solo game, win, win, win yourself, get it all. And he looked at me last night before I went to bed. He said, Grandma, tomorrow I'm going to try what you said. Maybe we'll make teams. We'll do it different. So I share the ball. So what we do and say makes a difference in other people's lives. And if we're balanced and calm and say things lovingly, uh, we're being light workers. We're, we're being light workers. So another amazing thing happened. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit here while you're still in that car wash. You're in this phase where all the water's blowing off. You're not quite ready to re-engage the car and go out into your regular consciousness. I'll tell you another sweet thing. We're going back and forth about something. He's six, but he's very smart, and he will split hairs. And he said, well, Grandma, um, let's not make a decision. Let's not jump to assumptions before we have all the facts in. <laughs> like, where did he get that? And he said, I learned that from life ingredients. Well, life ingredients is a beautiful program designed by Deb Kelly for parents and grandparents to provide to children to understand the emotional realms and making wonderful decisions. So this morning I sent off a text uh, email to my friend Deb. You have no idea what popped out of my grandson's mouth. So you never know when what you do or what you're thinking can make a difference in other people's lives. But if you're reacting and you're off kilter and you're thinking like them, if you're in training with them, you're not going to be the light worker to dispense some important notice or truth or appreciation or just your beingness that can change everything. So that's today's talk. I am Jan Jorgensen at soundandlighthealingarts.com signing off in Queens, New York here today with this beautiful uh, Brooklyn gentrification street here in New York. All right.